You are listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. And now, Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, Red Panda, Dead or Alive. Cynthia, darling! Hello, Duffy, you're looking well. Well, one tries. Almost half as well as you seem to think you look. Oh, you rotten thing! (laughs) (laughs) Darling, your party is simply smashing. Now, Duffy, you know better than that. I am merely the hostess. This party is for the Institute. I thought it was for the museum. The museum? Of some sort of philharmonic something or other. Is it? You know I honestly can't remember. Oh! (laughs) Cynthia, you remember my niece Julia, don't you? Of course. Lovely to see you again. Thank you, and thank you so much for the invitation. Oh, darling, not at all. Any friend of your uncle's is bound to be a supporter of the Institute. Museum. Oh, what have you? (laughs) I I don't understand. I thought you organized the charity ball. How can you not know whom the beneficiary is? Isn't she adorable? Quite. Dear heart, it doesn't really matter who benefits. It's just a socially acceptable excuse for a large and lavish ball. After all, hard times call for hard measures. We're only the idle rich when we're not giving to charity. This way, people can read the society pages without feeling animosity to those who might have more than they do. After all, they do such fine work at the museum. Philharmonic. Or what have you. (laughs) But how do your guests know whom to make out their contributions to? Cash, darling. Look at that great crystal globe, just brimming with it. And still they line up to stuff more in than their neighbor. I'm sure the reporters know who'll be getting it. Just don't you worry your pretty head about such things. Why, there's a room full of eligible young men you should be idly pretending to be disinterested. Plenty of fish in the sea tonight. Oh, my. And there's the biggest guppy of them all. Is that really? It certainly is. He's one of the city's wealthiest men, and he's available. Spends rather too much time with that lady driver of his. A servant? Don't be silly. A female chauffeur isn't that unusual usual. I had a cousin in London that kept one. Shall I introduce you, dear? I don't know. I just can't imagine how anyone can sit in the middle of a grand party like this and look so very bored. Don't be silly, darling. He's not bored. He's just appearing so, for fashion's sake. Well, it's a pretty strange fashion. I don't know. There's a certain inner chasm of boredom into which a man can only truly plummet when he's never had to work a day in his life. No, Duffy, what do you know about work? Not a thing! (laughs) That's what makes me such an authority! (laughs) (laughs) All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid the party is over. At least for you. Spread out, boys. Get their jewels, their watches, their wallets. And don't let's forget that crystal globe you've been so thoughtfully stuffing with cash. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the Red Panda. These gentlemen relieving you of your valuables are my trusty henchmen. And this is a tummy gun. If you are quiet and cooperate like good little sheep, you will be fleeced quickly and quietly. Should any of you get it into your heads to resist, I will kill this young lady right here. No, please, please don't kill me. If everyone cooperates, it won't be necessary, my dear. Even the Red Panda can show some mercy. This isn't right. The Red Panda fights for law and order. The Red Panda fights for one thing, mister. The Red Panda. Now keep your trap shut or next time it won't be an ice sculpture that gets shut up. All right, boys. Let's get out of here before John Law arrives. Thank you for your kind contribution, ladies and gentlemen. The Red Panda wishes you a pleasant evening. (laughs) 
This is dreadful. All these reporters. Chin up, Cynthia. It's an evening no one will soon forget. That red panda's made a laughing stock of me. Boss! Boss! Boss, you in here? I'm right here, Kit. Boss! Well, I was sitting in the car reading the paper when all of a sudden the, the red panda runs past with a bunch of guys. And I saw him. That is, I saw... It's all right. No one can hear us over here. Boss! Well, he looked just exactly like you. The mask, the hat, the suit, everything. Even his couplings match yours. And I thought, now where's he think he's going without me? So I called after him, but by then they were gone. Did you get a look at the car? Two cars. Fast looking. I got the plate numbers. Good girl. Jeez, boss. Hey, why didn't you take the guy out? And the henchman? And the Tommy gun? The heck with a Tommy gun. I've seen you deal with worse. Not without blowing the lid off the millionaire playboy routine. Let's get out of here. I can't spend all night here answering a lot of police questions. That phony red panda has got to be stopped! Extry, extry! Read all about it! Red panda shoots up society party! Extry! Keep those hands in the air, buddy! Cross the red panda again and you'll regret it. Extra, extra! Red panda holds up a hockey game! Extra! All right, everybody out! This armored car is now the property of the red panda. Red panda hijacks payroll! Crime spree continues! <laughs> O'Malley to address Red Panda Crisis at public meeting tonight. I see we've been upgraded to crisis. What's this we, pale face? I don't see any evil flying squirrels around. Yeah, and don't think I'm not a little put out about that. I'm sure. Those uh, plates came up dry? Stolen. And they keep changing cars with every caper. I don't get any of this, boss. The targets this guy's hitting. Yes? They're all public places. High-risk jobs. Lots of crowds. Lots of press. Low returns compared with what he could be bringing in if he weren't so busy showing off. And there you've hit the nail on the head. I don't follow. If his objective is to make as much ill-gotten gain in as short a time as possible, he's not very good at what he does. Right. In which case, why haven't we caught him yet? Well... Right. He's not trying to pass any bills from the armored car. He's not trying to sell any of the jewels. There's no way to trace him or predict his next move because he's not in it for the money. Then what? How many criminals can there possibly be that could organize a gang like this, bankroll the entire operation with no other motivation than revenge and spite against the Red Panda? (laughs) Please, tell me that was a rhetorical question. It was. So what do we do? I don't know, Kit. I don't know. Let's see if we can pick up Chief O'Malley's speech on the radio. Maybe he's got an idea. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, radio listeners, and concerned citizens, for too long now our city has been home to a great menace, and I do mean home. For many citizens of Toronto have made a folk hero of a masked man who takes it upon himself to act outside the law, by no one's rules but his own. And now the seeds of that casual acceptance of vigilantism has come to fruit. I speak, of course, of the Red Panda, the city's supposed champion, who now holds it in a grip of terror. Members of your police force, including myself, have warned against mollycoddling this mystery man, knowing full well that when a man continually flouts the law, he will eventually come to know no law but his own. That day has come. Whatever small contribution this red panda has made to law and order has now been erased by the vicious actions of the last several days. Most seriously, earlier today, just hours before this press conference was set to begin, the Red Panda and his gang stormed into a downtown bank with guns blazing. The amount of money taken was minimal. The raid was poorly planned, but a security guard, a man with a young family, lies wounded in hospital. The extent of his injuries unknown at this time. Our prayers are with him. But even should he pull through, it is only a matter of time before this... Monster adds the crime of murder to those already before him. That is why, 
Effective immediately, the call has gone out to all police throughout the city. Bring in the Red Panda! Dead or alive? Why, that O'Malley! That no good rat! He's been after you for years. The people, the press, even his own men don't take him seriously. They know you're a hero. Not anymore. Come on, boss. Don't talk like that. It'd take more than this to make people forget. They've forgotten already. Don't you read the papers? But... (laughs) It was hard enough to win their trust the first time. I've always known it was a fragile thing. I guess someone else finally figured that out. So now what do we do? We? Nothing. What do you mean? Kit, I think you should go. Where? As far away from me as you can get. Boss? I mean it. What we do is dangerous enough at the best of times. Dangerous enough that I often wondered if I should have let you get involved. When it was just organized crime, street thugs, and the occasional power-mad supervillain, we had a chance. But with every cop on the beat gunning for us, too? It's practically suicide. And how do we fight the police without turning into what they say we are? You can't stay. I won't have it. You think you can just send me away? You think I'll go just because the odds got worse? No, sir, I'm staying. I'll find you another job. I'll see that you're looked after. You think I'm worried about my paycheck? You don't think much of me. That's not true. You stuck your neck out for me plenty. If I turn chicken now, I'm no better than everybody else that's turned their backs on you. You taught me. You trained me. You're stuck with me. I gave you that mask. Yeah? Think you're tough enough to come take it back? I could hypnotize you. Make you want to go. You could have done that any time. You could have done that when I told you I knew your secret. You didn't. You gave me what I wanted. You let me help. So let me help. You know why I didn't? Didn't what? Hypnotize you. Make you forget what you knew. Send you away. Why? Who am I? What do you mean? You're the Red Panda. Am I? I'm not wearing the mask, or the hat, or the static shoes. Yeah, but... What? The spoiled rich guy. The dissolute empty suit. He's the mask. Right. He wasn't always. When I started this, it was a lark. A thing to do to see if I could. The training, the equipment. Then I started to make a real difference. I started doing more real good than I'd have ever done if I lived my other life a thousand times over. It became who I am. The spoiled rich boy became more a thin character sketch than a person. I couldn't be him again if I wanted to. And when you saw through it... Yeah? Secrets are best when shared, aren't they? I can't remember how I did it all on my own, Squirrel. I really can't. Well, just as well. Because he ain't going to find out any time soon. Okay? Okay. You win. I hope you don't regret it later. I won't. Chin up, boss. When we find this clown, I'm going to shove that dime store mask down his throat. You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Decoder Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. Why me? Why why always me? Gotta get out of here. Gotta get away. Door's locked. Hey. Hey, it's Peeper. I gotta get off the street. Let me in. (laughs) No. Why me? I've never done nothing to nobody very much. Why me? (laughs) The alley. It's a dead end. No. Nowhere left to run, Peeper Scranton. Stay away. Let me alone. (laughs) I heard your boss had gone crazy, Squirrel. Not you. You're going to be sorry you said that. I'm sorry now. I'm sorry I got out of bed this morning. Keep away from me or or I'll shoot. <laughs> You're not a trigger man, peeps. You never were. Keep back, I said, or, or I'll scream for a cop. 
You've never called a cop in your life, Scranton. Yeah? Well, maybe it's a good time to start. Well, we can't have that. No, no not the knockout gas. <coughs> Wake up, people. Wake up. I don't have all night. Huh? Oh. Hello, flying squirrel. Good morning. I was having the strangest dream that, that you was chasing me. <laughs> I think you're still a little groggy, peeper. I need information. The kind of information a well-connected underworld weasel like you would have. Squirrel? Yes, Peeper? Why is the street a, a hundred feet above our heads? Because you're tied by the ankles hanging upside down a hundred feet above the street, Peeper. <laughs> I can stay up here with you because, you see, my static shoes let me cling to sheer surfaces. <laughs> Stuff a sock in it, mister. Up here, we can talk without attracting any stray bullets from the police. I want to know who's running the phony red panda gang. And I want to know now. Please, squirrel. I'm scared of heights. If you don't tell me what I want to know in a heck of a hurry, you'll get back to street level and puddle form, paper. Now spill! There ain't no phony gang. The, the masked man turned hoodlum, that's all. Losing my patience here, paper. How about we loosen those ropes? Please, Squirrel, they'll kill me. Them later or me now. This, Your choice. This ain't like you. Three cops took pot shots at me today, kitten. This is exactly like me. Now tell me what I want to know, or I drop you so the next guy knows I mean business. No, no, please, please. It's, it's the Golden Claw. The Golden Claw? But we broke up her criminal empire months ago. Yeah, well, she's still got the clams and the connection. She set all this up from prison. Now it's rolling and you'll never stop it. Oh, you might be right, Peeper. See you in the funny papers. What are those? Retractable gliding membranes. Don't you have a set built into your costume? Costume? Hmm. Then you're gonna have a heck of a time getting down from here. Aren't you? Squirrel? No, d don't leave me here. I'm sorry, I said... That was fast, Squirrel. Did you find anything out? It's not the flying squirrel, Red Panda. It's me. Tom Tomorrow, man of the future. I don't know which of your futuristic gizmos led you to my underground lair, but lead yourself back out before I get angry. Spare me the tough talk. I didn't need a gizmo. Archaeologists excavated your secret headquarters years before I was born. Well, bully for modern science, what do you want? There's a death warrant out for you, and you ask what I want? I can handle it. You're handling it pretty well so far. You know how tough it makes it for masked heroes everywhere when one of our number is under this kind of suspicion. Sorry if I inconvenienced you. Get back to your own century if you don't like it. You should know the Justice Union has considered bringing you in to answer these charges. The Justice Union is still smarting from the last time they set foot in my city. I'm ready for them, and I'm ready for you if that's what you're here for. You're a lousy team player, you know that? Those tights make you look like a sissy, you know that? Darn it, Panda, I'm trying to help you. I didn't ask for that, and I don't want it. Fine. I just need to hear you say that you haven't done any of the things you've been accused of. I don't have to defend myself to you. I've got the police and the underworld to contend with already. The Long Underwear Brigade can take a number. Boss! Boss! Peeper Scranton spilled it. No. We've got company. Flying Squirrel, this is Tom Tomorrow, Man of the Future. Pleased to meet ya. Ma'am. Tom was just leaving. Leaving? Well, haven't you come to help? Apparently, my help isn't wanted. Well, hold the phone a second, would you, Mr. Tomorrow? Boss, listen to this. Peeper Scranton spilled his guts about the phony Red Panda gang. The whole thing's being run from prison by... The Golden Claw. The Golden Claw? Who's the Golden Claw? An arch-criminal we shut down a few months ago. Or so we thought. Apparently, if she's going down, you're going down with her. That's good work, Squirrel. It gives us a place to start. A place to start? Why don't you just contact the authorities? You've gathered that we're persona non grata around here tomorrow. 
It would be nothing more than a blind allegation. They've waged this war in the public eye. If we're to win it, we'll need to be just as public. There needs to be no question in the minds of the citizenry that the Red Panda has always been on the side of justice. Well, that sort of public capture would certainly satisfy the concerns of the mystery men community. Not that high on my to-do list, but if it gets you out of my lair, I'm all for that. Boss? Yes, Squirrel? I think I've got an idea. Cynthia, darling! Oh, Duffy, I thought we'd never see the light of day again. This whole red panda business, the entire social season has ground to a halt. And aside from the sheer opulence of the ball, everyone's here to catch another glimpse of the red panda's gang, including this gaggle of reporters. Frankly, darling, I think our host quite mad, hosting such an event in his own home, when it's sure to bring these beasts right to his door. Are my ears burning over here? There you are, old boy, smashing parts. But aren't you worried about the Red Panda? Certainly not. I've never believed the Red Panda was behind this crime spree, and I'm more than willing to open up my home to prove it. And, of course, raise some money for the Institute. A museum. Or what have you. (laughs) (laughs) No, you'll see. We've got nothing to fear from the Red Panda. And that's just where you're wrong, sir. Ah, Chief O'Malley. So glad you could make it. And not that I don't appreciate the invitation. I just wish you'd let me bring my men in to catch the Red Panda when he does attack. I told you, O'Malley, I've made arrangements with some private security. My guests are perfectly safe from any harm, and I've personally guaranteed to repay anything they might lose if I'm wrong. I hope you're not for your sake, old boy. I wore my extra-large money belt. All right, everybody, hands in the air. Come on, all of you. When the Red Panda gives orders, everybody better listen. What's the matter with you, bub? Too rich to raise your own hands like everybody else? No, it's just I know something that they don't. What's that? You're not the Red Panda. Yeah? What makes you so sure? Because that guy behind you is. What? You! That's right, you phony. I knew you'd never be able to resist a target like this. Fortunately, our host this evening still trusted us. Bad mistake. He'll pay for it. Get him, boys! Let's go, squirrel! (laughs) 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 The real Red Panda's won! Isn't he wonderful? And that quite distracting sidekick of his isn't bad either. This phony and his gang were working for a criminal syndicate run from prison by the Golden Claw. Chief O'Malley, I leave it to your boys to extract their confessions. I hope you'll be retracting that death warrant now. I suppose I must. But you'll slip up one day, Red Panda, and I'll be waiting. Good enough. Let's go, Squirrel. Not yet. There's something I promised to do. Give me that mask, you phony. Sorry there's no ketchup. What do you mean? And here's something to wash it down with. Well, Tom, I know I'm not big on team play, but thanks for the assist. I'm just glad to be able to help. So are we. And, thanks to your futuristic disguise, Gizmos, no one would ever have guessed that it was you playing the boss's secret identity while he and I took out the trash. It was the easiest bust I've ever been on. All I had to do was have a good time and wait for the fireworks. I hope it's not too awkward for you. What's that? My knowing your secret identity. I assure you, you you can trust me. I'm sure. But we won't need to find out. Why's that? I took the liberty of planting a post-hypnotic suggestion earlier. You'll remember everything, but slightly differently. You'll recall meeting both the Red Panda and the host of the party at the same time. You'll also remember watching Incognito in the crowd in your own secret identity, just in case anything went wrong. Sorry, Tom. Sorry for what? I enjoyed the party immensely. And a good thing our host still trusted the Red Panda. Nice man. A bit dull. Well, I must be off. Till next time. Engaging rocket boots. Blast off! So, how does it feel to be a hero again? It's all right. Thanks, Kit. You stood by me. I won't forget it. You'd better not. In fact, sometimes a trusty sidekick deserves to be taken to dinner... 
What do you say? Dinner? What, with a servant? Whatever will the society pages say? Kit Baxter, <laughs> behave yourself. Yes, boss. And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda! This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, Episode 7, Red Panda Dead or Alive, was written and directed by Greg Taylor with original music by Andrea Lyons and featured the vocal talents of Stephen Burley, Andrea Lyons, Shannon Arnold, Christopher Mott, Peter Nichol, Jonathan Lear, Clarissa Dunetterlanden, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night. He looks so cute and cuddly as he hops around, delivering colorful eggs to children around the world. But something has gone wrong. A meteor hit the earth near this hard-working bunny, and he started to change. This Easter, experience the terror of Easter Bunny. A 50-foot tall bundle of ferocious fur will deliver eggs that explode on impact. And watch out for that cotton tail. This cute, cuddly colossus is a true basket case. Coming soon to a theater near you, Easter Bunny. Hippity-hoppity. Easter's on its way.